Welcome to Berea Temple International Church's podcast. I am your host, Timothy, and we're here together on this beautiful day to hear from God. So let's all prepare ourselves to receive what God has in store for us today. Let's begin. So we're going to continue on in our series Uh, that we are working through, we are working through. If you can put it on the we are slide, guys, the the sermon title. Thank you. We're going to continue through this journey that we started two weeks ago called Hope and Healing for Our Community. We are, right? We are. We are going through who we are as a body. We are AG. We are an Assemblies of God, Spirit-filled Pentecostal church. We have a set of core doctrines that we all agree to. We have a set of beliefs that we all say, hey, this is what we're working toward. And that's all wonderful. And we spent our time going through those. But it doesn't matter what we believe if we don't put what we believe into action, into actionable, tangible purposes. And so we believe that we are AG church members, that we know what it is to be the body of Christ, to rise up and to stand up at the corner of Compton and Russell and say, we are the hands and feet of Jesus to this neighborhood. But beyond that, we are an AG church who, is gonna, who wants to offer hope and healing in our community. Listen, I can stand up here and I can preach to you the most glorious sermons of Babylon and the the tabernacle and the temple and all of the rites and passages. I can give you all of the stories of Jesus and Gennesaret and Galilee and I can tell you all of the details and you can have all of the accumulated knowledge of the Scriptures. But if we do not put it into action, if we do not take that knowledge and share it outside of who we are, then what good is the knowledge? Well, I have it. I'm going to heaven. That's great. Yay. But if we don't put it into action, we have to be a church of action. We have to be a church that can offer hope and healing to our community. So we're going to turn our attention today to probably one of the most pervasive issues in our community specific. When we talk about our community, we're talking about South City, not St. Louis. Yes, St. Louis is our community, but we're talking about where, do the, where does the church live? Now, I know some of you live farther south in South County. Some of you live in North City. Some of you live in West County, whatever. But when we talk about the church home and where we live, we live in South City. And so when we talk about our community, we're talking about South City. And what is one of the most pervasive issues that our city is dealing with today is the issue of fear. Whether it's the fear of rising crime in our neighborhoods, it's the fear or the fear, uh, the anxiety of economic hardship that many families are facing, or the uncertainty of the unknown in a rapidly changing world. Fear is something we all grapple with in different ways. Again, I want to express to you the importance of some of the images that I'm sharing with you. I'm not cherry picking. I went out to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I picked the local articles and I screenshotted that page. This was two weeks ago. Forgive me because we ended up doing VBS last week. So this is from two weeks ago. But this is the articles from our news for that day. All kinds of things that are happening that are deal, we're dealing with fear in all kinds of ways. Here in St. Louis, especially our neighbor, in, in our neighborhood, we see fears played out every day. The headlines remind us of challenges our community face. Violence, job insecurity, food insecurity, the ongoing struggle for justice, equality, unity, 
These aren't just abstract concepts. They're not just ethereal things for us to think about and go, well, you know. They're real. They're pressing concerns that weigh heavily on the hearts and the minds of not only our citizenry, the people around us, but I would fair to say of some of us that are here in the building today. But as people of faith, we're called to respond to fear. We're called to respond to those who are in need, whatever the need is. Whatever is going on in our society, we are called to be the front line, the first responders, if you will, to the spiritual needs of our community. But we're not recalled to respond to fear with despair. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. Oh, man, yeah, that's horrible. But we need to respond with what we know. What do we know? We are. I am. He is who. So we are what. And if we are what, if we are, then we are the hands and feet of He who is. Do you see what I'm talking about? The building that we've been doing over the last year and a half. We understand who God is. So if we understand who God is and what that makes us, If He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, then we are ones who are provided for. We are ones who know how it is to be provided for. And so now today, we are ones who can take that provision out into the marketplace and say, I know you're going through struggles. I know you're going through difficulty. I know it's hard, but we serve a God who can answer. But do we? Do we take the answer out into the highways and byways, into the marketplace? We are called to respond to fear with strength and assurance that God does provide. Wow, that should have got an amen, but that's okay. The Bible teaches us that faith is the antidote to fear. If we're fearful, we pray. If we're afraid, we seek God. If we are fearful about what's going on, we trust in the Lord. Faith offers us a way to live boldly and confidently, even in the face of overwhelming obstacles. Listen, for some of you, you may be facing challenges that I will never understand. But also, the the, the reverse is true. I may be facing challenges with my family that you have no clue about. So today I want, us to, I want us to dig in. I want us to look at how our faith anchors us in God, in His unshakable presence, how it strengthens us to act courageously and empowers us to bring hope and healing to our community. Because ultimately, that's what we're talking about. So today, if you're a note taker, our sermon... T- title is Overcoming Fear with Faith. Our community. How do we offer hope and healing to our community? We offer it by overcoming fear with faith. Helping them see that there is an opportunity to serve a God who can provide and help overcome all that's going on. The first thing I want us to look at, if you're a note taker, is that faith anchors us in God's presence. When fear begins to creep into our lives, it's easy to feel untethered, unconnected, as if we're being tossed by the waves of uncertainty. But we have an anchor. And that is our faith. There used to be a song, I forget who it was by, I think it was Ray Bolts, and said, the anchor holds. In the midst of the storm, the anchor holds. What is the anchor? It is our faith. It is our faith in our provider. It firmly grounds us in the unshakable presence of God. In the the midst of the sea, in the midst of the turmoil, the ups and the downs of life. Students, listen. You have no clue what you're about to get into. All of us who are adults, we can honestly tell you, and I think I can speak for almost every adult in the room, If we would have known at your age 
the things that we were going to have to go through, I think we'd have turned around and ran the other way. But you know what all of us, have been, we've made it through. Why, how do I know that? Because we're all here today. Now, I'm not saying we, haven't, we don't have some bumps and bruises. I'm not saying we don't have some scars. I'm not saying that we don't have some internal heart hurt that the Holy Spirit is still working on and dealing with and bringing us through. But you know what? We got through it. Why? Because our anchor holds. Our anchor is, when we're in the midst of the sea, our anchor is connected to the bedrock down at the bottom of the sea, lodged in those things that aren't movable. And so when we anchor ourselves, when we anchor our faith in Christ, when we anchor our faith in Him, the wind and the waves can come. It doesn't matter. We'll ride it out. Or, He'll come and say, peace be still. And the trials and the tribulations, all of a sudden, doesn't mean that it's still... But the peace that passes understanding will come into our heart. And all of a sudden, the wind and the waves, it doesn't matter. Because I have a peace that nobody else can know about. See, this is, this is a thing, when we talk about peace and faith, it, it very often seems like it's distant or abstract, but it's not. It is real. It is abiding. It is something that we can depend on every day of our lives. It is not just a, an ethereal thought. Through our faith, we can recognize that God is with us. But we experience that peace when He is with us. And that sustains us in the midst of all that life will throw at you. Everything that comes. I want us to look a little bit, I want to take just a couple minutes in this particular main point to look at how anchoring works in our daily lives. Because when I was a student, when I was a younger person, I would hear my pastor talk about these abstract concepts like, you know, crucify yourself daily. What? If I took that literal, what does that mean? Well, there's a cross there's some nails down. No, obviously that's an, it's an abstract concept to give up ourselves. And so I want to I be practical about what it means to anchor ourselves in God's promises and the power of his prayer. So the first thing I want us to talk about is just simply God's promise to be with us. When we talk about anchoring ourselves, there is a promise that God has made to be with us. We look at Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. It says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. It doesn't say maybe, it does, it, it, there isn't any passivity to those statements. It says, don't be afraid, I am with you. Not I might be, not uh, I, I could be with you. I am with you. Don't be discouraged, I'm your God. Why do we have discouragement? Because we've placed something else in the place of God and now we're discouraged because it can't be God. If we're battling discouragement, it's because we've allowed something else to take the place of what God should have been. Does that make sense? He says, I will strengthen you and help you. I will. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. In the face of fear, God's presence is our anchor. The promise that God is with us is powerful, and it is a reminder that we're never alone, even in the most difficult situations. The presence is not passive, but active. He says, I will, I am, present tense. 
God is with us to guide us, to protect us, and to provide for us. What does that mean to a, 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 Sa- a South City St. Louis? You know what that tells me? With fear abiding in, in South City, it tells me that God isn't in the place that he needs to be. And whose fault is that? How many churches are in South City? How many churches that will we'll even exclude the ones that are fringe or, or we would call off base? How many Bible-believing, God-fearing, Pentecostal, Baptist, non-denominational, whatever, evangelical, EV-free churches are in South City? And yet fear runs rampant in our city. People are afraid to go outside. People are afraid to walk their dogs. People are afraid to go to the gas station in the evenings. But see, there's something that can happen. That we as the church, and this is only a first step. See, we can help our city find peace through prayer. We can be praying for our city. Who prays specifically for the city? I'm not talking about in general, Lord, bless the city. I'm talking about, Lord, bless Compton Heights, bless Shaw, bless Fox Park, bless Soulard. Lord, have your way over Tower Grove East. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come and move over the grove. Specific your neighborhood by name, and to begin to cry out to the Holy Spirit to pour Himself over our neighborhood. I can tell you, we do on a semi-regular basis as a board pray for our city. And specifically, we take, we've taken up at our last board meeting to pray specifically for Compton Heights. Our neighborhood. Our home. Philippians chapter 4, verses seven, 6 and 7, it should be a very familiar passage. It says, don't worry about anything. Say anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Prayer is our lifeline to God's peace. When fear grips our hearts, we're invited to bring our anxieties to the Lord. And He graciously exchanges our fear, our anxiety, our worry for His peace. We need to take that message to the lost and dying of South City, of North City, of South County, of West County, of North County. See, this is our Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Our Jerusalem, yes, we live in a metropolitan area. So I would would posit to you that our Jerusalem is not St. Louis. Our Jerusalem is South City or maybe even more specifically Compton Heights. And then we move out from there and out from there and out from there. And so as we exist as a church, we need to find ourselves anchored in God, in His peace. When we find ourselves anchored in God's presence, we find peace through our faith, and then we are able to then share that peace with others. If we don't have peace, if we are not anchored, if we are still being tossed to and fro through all of the life storms, then we have nothing to offer to the lost and the dying. There is no lifesaver ring to throw out to somebody else who's out there being tossed to and fro. But if we're in the boat, if we're anchored, and we're solid, and we're stable, and we can say, hey, over here! 
Catch this. We can begin to help pull them in. See, that's a, a weird analogy, but it's evangelism. It's really all evangelism is. It's taking a lifeline and sharing it with somebody else. It's taking a lifeline and saying, I have the answer. How many of us, if we were out on the water and we saw somebody drowning and they were going under, bloop, bloop, and we had a, a, a life jacket sitting right here, how many of us would go, of course not. Yet, that's how we treat evangelism. That's how we treat sharing our faith. Go, oh, well, Lord bless them. Somebody will tell them about Jesus, I'm sure. All the while he's going, hey, listen, I just stacked you up with a whole bunch of life jackets. A whole bunch of life rings. See, when we talk about faith that anchors us, it also empowers us. It gives us the strength and the courage to step out and to take action, even when the fear tries to hold us back. Oh, what, what are they going to say? Are they going to make fun of me? Students, this is a, an important one for you. You know, I don't want to not be the cool kid. I don't want to not be popular. I don't want to not be this or that. And so I don't want to say nothing about my faith because, well, you know, I told dirty jokes or I cussed a whole bunch yesterday. And then if I try to tell Jesus today, what are people going to think? They're just going to think I'm a hypocrite or they're not going to buy in or whatever it is. But we're called to share our faith. We're called to step out and to take action even in the midst of difficulties. So our faith keeps us grounded but also pushes us forward to act courageously, even in the face of fear, even in the face of the, the, the stuff that's going on. But then faith for us, strengthens us to act accordingly. So this is number two, guys. Faith strengthens us to act courageously. When we talk about offering hope and healing to our community, this is not something we can do lightly. It's not something that we can do just flippantly. And then, frankly, it's not something we typically do instinctively or, or comfortably. Typically, for us, stepping out means that we have to step out in faith, stepping out with courage. Faith provides us the comfort of God's presence, but it also demands something more. It calls us to action. True faith is never stagnant. It never stirs us within us without giving us the courage to face our fears head on and to take the step that reflect our trust in God. What does Acts 1.8 say? It says you'll receive... Oh, come on. We'll receive... This is... We are assemblies of God. This is probably our foundational verse. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be what? My witness. This is what we're talking about. Faith gives us the strength to step out. Courage is not something we muster on our own, but it is strength given by God, by the Holy Spirit, enabling us to act even when we feel uncertain, even when we don't feel like doing it. In this way, not only our faith not only reassures us, but equips us. You'll be my witnesses. You'll be, receive power to be a witness. The equipping of that power. The equipping to be the witness is power, strength, courage, faith. To share what it is that we need to share. And this is who we are as the church. It gives us the ability to take steps of faith. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Faith isn't merely believing, but it is acting on that belief. 
God calls us to be strong and courageous, knowing that His presence empowers us to step out in faith, even when we feel maybe a little bit of that fear. You see, Peter was called out to take a literal step of faith out of the boat. That kind of faith took courage that was outside of Peter's normal ability. How do we know that? Because almost immediately he puts his eyes on the water and begins to sink. But in that moment, Jesus reached his hand out to save him, showing that even if our courage is a bit shaky, even if our courage isn't 100%, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit is there to support us. Even if what God is calling us to seems daunting, his presence will sustain us. Even if it seems ridiculous, Peter, I need you to step out of the boat and onto the water. Peter was a fisherman. He knew what that meant. Peter knew, as soon as I put my foot on the water, it's going to go down through the water. They weren't super great on science at that point, but guess what? He understood surface tension. It wasn't going to happen. But in spite of his fear... He said, I see you, Lord. My eye is anchored on you. My eye, my my faith is anchored in you. And if you have called me out, I'm going to take this step. I don't understand it. I know the reality of what's going to happen. But I'm going to do it anyway because my eyes aren't on the water. My eyes are on you. And he took the step of faith. Now, he's human. He's not Jesus. All of a sudden, he went, okay, I did it. Wait, what did I do? Uh Uh-oh. And he began to sink. And Jesus was like, ah, Peter, come on. And he pulls him back out. What does this look like for the church? What does this look like for Berea Temple? This might be getting involved in community initiatives. Things that we typically aren't, you know, super involved in. It might be creating a ministry to support those in need. Or it might be standing up for what's right. It might be being the literal hands and feet of Jesus. Getting out, getting up out of our seat walking out the doors and begin walking down the street to go, okay, Lord. So how many of you remember the Seek and Save event last year? Hopefully everybody. It's not been that long ago. The young man that we had speak that day, our guest speaker, I follow him on Facebook, and they do this thing, (laughs) like or not like the name of it, but they do what they call miracle hunting. And their church goes out on the weekends and they begin to, they, they pray over a section of, of, of neighborhood and they begin to go and walk that neighborhood looking for what God is going to do in that neighborhood. And they begin to pray. And in that process, they have baptized people. They have led people to Christ. They have cast out demons. They have healed people. They have seen miracles happen because their faith was anchored. And it may mean that some of us who go, what? You want us to do what? may need to come together at, oh, I don't know. What do we do on Wednesday nights? We have prayer meeting. And at prayer meeting, we could do what? Pray? And begin to pray over neighborhoods? And then take, not just here, but then take action and move beyond these four walls and take that prayer time and move out into the community, out into the neighborhood as a concerted effort that we are the hands and feet of Jesus to a lost and dying world who are going to provide hope and healing to our community. And we're going to go on miracle hunting adventures or Christ interaction, divine appointment, whatever we want to call it. I'm not saying we have to do that. I'm simply saying what might that look like 
as a church. Putting into practice, overcoming fear with faith and taking a step of faith beyond who we are and what we are right now. Because the church is the source of courage. Christ is the source, but what is the church? The church is the hands and feet of Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. He has given us power, love, and self-discipline, not fear. We can step out and take that power and express the love of Jesus to a lost and dying world. We have to take the self-discipline step to step out. Or we'll never be a church that offers hope and healing to our community. The Holy Spirit is with us in His power. He has the ability to create things. He has the ability to bring people together and say, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what background you are, what nation you come from, or what your socioeconomic status is. But He can bring them together in a single unified body. And we can move forward together as a body. How do I know this? Because we have already done it. He has already done it. And so what do we as a church, what are we called to be? We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To do what? To seek and to save that which is lost. We are hunters. Not in a masculine pseudo thing. We are for Christ on a mission to find those who are lost, to seek them out, to find them, and to provide an opportunity, a pathway back to Christ for them. We are not just individuals, but a community empowered by God to be a source of courage for each other and for our community. When our community is having a difficulty, I was asked one day, would Berea Temple, if there were, was a shooting in the neighborhood or in the, in the vicinity, would Berea Temple be willing to open their doors as a, as a, a, a resource, as a, as a meeting place, a, a place of refuge, so that they could meet and come and be here? I said, absolutely call me I said I will fling open the doors as wide as they can are we ready for that though do we have people who said hey pastor I know it's a few and far between thing but I'm ready I'm equipped pastor I want you to know I have a background in and if that happens call me I will be here I don't care what time it is I will be there to help and lend to whatever hand I can. And maybe that's simply filling water jugs and bringing up fresh water for people to drink. Maybe it's offering help to triage for our understaffed police officers and, and EMS workers. And you're a medical person and you're like, hey, listen, I'm already licensed, equipped. I already know what to do. But see, these are ministries. These are opportunities to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When we gather, when we pray, when we work together, we encourage each other to face our own fears and to face the issues that are going on with our community together with boldness. When our, as our faith strengthens us to act courageously, we'll see that our actions are not just for our benefit. When we talk about being anchored in Christ here, in our hearts, it's going to automatically have an outflow. It's going to impact those around us. It's going to help us find courage that comes from faith. It is not only for our personal victories, but intended to bring about a transformation for our community. God is equipping us for our community. He is making changes in me today for our community. He is making changes in you for something that He has planned 
for the community. And you're not going to be the same Christian that you are today that you were yesterday. Because who you were yesterday was for His plan and purpose yesterday. Who you were 10 years ago was to serve a purpose that He had for this church 10 years ago. But He has a new plan, a new purpose. When I got here, we talked about, we sang about new wine, new wine skins. There is a new plan, a new purpose, a new function of what we're doing. And He is equipping each one of us for this next phase of what He wants to do. Not at Berea Temple, not only at Berea Temple, but within the city, within the community that we serve. But how do we bring faith and power and hope and healing to the world around us? Faith empowers us to transform our community. Listen, when we talk about being, offering hope and healing, we're talking about transformation. We're talking about change. We're talking about a, a, a fundamental shift. I know those of you who have been at Berea Temple for forever, you already know this, but I'm just going to make it as a general statement anyway. Essentially, at its core, I know there's some apartment owners and things that are a little, maybe a little more, but... Berea Temple is the largest anchor organization in Compton Heights. We are the center of the community. We are the large, within our actual little neighborhood boundaries, our church, I mean, there, there was a church that used to be down there that was the literature museum, but it's long since gone. We may not be numerically, but we sit as the core of this neighborhood. We have an opportunity to be the center of the neighborhood again. When people talk about, I need help, where do, they, where do we want them to go? We want them to come knock on the doors. We don't want them to go to the city. We don't want them to go to some who's going to just put them into some system and they're going to be a number. And we want them to knock on our doors. We want to be the first stop. We, when somebody says, hey, you know what, I'm going through something, I want us to pray. We had the, I told you the story of the man, the homeless gentleman who found his way in through an unlocked door by accident and, and was sitting. That doesn't bother me. I mean, I understand there's some safety concerns and things like that. But I want people to know that this is a place of refuge, a place of sanctuary where they can come, regardless if they're a member or not. I told you about the sign outside. There is hope. Change can happen. The last line says, join us Sunday. Join us. Come, be a part of what there is. We can be empowered to change our community. We can become agents of change. Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Through, verse 14 through verse 16 says, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Berea Temple stands at the pinnacle, at the corner, at the center of Compton Heights. We don't want that to be hidden. We want to put it up on the lampstand as it is and where everybody can see everybody drives by here I talk to people out in the community all of the time and I'm not talking about this community I'm talking about just in my out and abouts and people say uh, it'll come up that I'm a pastor of one of the churches here in the city and they'll go oh really where at and I'll say Berea Temple is international church and they'll go oh where's that at well we're at the corner of Compton and Russell oh I drive by there every day literally all the time, regular occurrence. I drive by there all the time. I drive by there on my way to work. I drive by there on my way to this or that or whatever. Now sometimes it's, oh, we didn't know that church was still open. <laughs> yes, it's still open. But some, most of the time they go, oh yeah, we've seen that church. So then my response usually is, well, then you should come inside. We would love to have you. We'd love for you to visit and come and be part of, our, of what, we're what we're doing. 
We as the church can be agents of change. We can be the thing, the catalyst. When we talk about wanting to see change in St. Louis, we can be it. It only took 12 to change the known world. Yeah? Disciples, 12 of them, remember that? Sunday school? Okay. If not, teach that next week. I'm kidding. (laughs) There's, I don't know how many people in the room today. There's more than 12. We can be agents of change for changing South City, changing the makeup, changing the heart of the city. We are Berea Temple, a church with a heart for the city. Why do I know that? Because I found letterhead in the church office that has that printed on it. It said, Berea Temple, a church in the heart of the city with a heart for the city. And I like that. That's who we need to be. We need to have a heart for the city. Because fear is going to paralyze our community. And it has in many ways. But faith can mobilize it. When we talk about seek and save, that was faith mobilizing people to make an impact in our neighborhood. As believers, we're called to be light in dark places. Can I tell you a little secret? How many of you have heard that before? We're called to be light in in, in the midst of the dark, right? You've heard that before. You know what that means? It means you have to go into dark places. Most of us don't like that. Most of us, when we enter a room, we go, click, light. Because we don't want to be in the dark. Sometimes even in our own homes. But to be light in dark places means we have to go to dark places. To bring hope and healing to areas that are plagued by fear, we have to be willing to step out. We have to be like our ancestors and run into the plague, into the problem, and offer hope and healing, not run away from it. One of our sister churches, and you've heard me talk a lot about this, but one of our sister AG churches, Life360 in Springfield, Uh, many years ago created a nonprofit to address the needs of their community beyond what the church could normally do. Today, they have food distribution programs across the state and, and to rural communities. They're helping create jobs. And they have transitional housing for those that age out of the foster care system, helping them find stability and many other areas within their lives. These are the type of things that are possible when we overcome fear with faith and believe that we can become agents of change. These are the things that can happen. You look at those numbers that that were shared. um, Specifically, I can't read those from over here. So 748,885 meals served, 25 communities reached, 54 new jobs created. They had faith to step out and say, listen, I think we can do this. We may or may not have the the ability within our own pocketbook today, but I believe that we can step out in faith and do this. We can be the agents of change. Now, for us, whether that's simply doing community outreach, advocacy for justice, or simply loving our neighbors, Our faith should be evident in all of our actions. The last thing I want us to share is just, it's a rubber meets the road kind of a thing. It's just a practical down to earth. The only way we're going to restore hope is through faithful living. We have to be found faithful. It's great to talk and and champion and cheer about all those things that are going on and all of these wonderful things. But if we don't restore our own faithful living, we have no opportunity. Again, we, we have nothing to throw as a lifeline. Look at Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people that I see that claim to be in Christ 
who appear to be running on about half empty. And so there's no overflow. It's not that they don't have some. It's not that they're not somewhat filled. But there is no overflow. There is no outflow. See, our faith is not just for ourselves. It's meant to overflow. It's meant to flow out. If you've ever come to the altar and had me pray for you, one of the things that I pray for is, Lord, fill them to overflowing. Let your spirit flow out of them. Because when we live out our faith boldly, trusting God, we become conduits of His hope and His healing. And we as a church, because we are filled with faith, because we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are out then outflowing of the hope and healing that we want to provide to our community. But all of this isn't just a tip. This isn't pastor preaching a message and we're going to do this for a, a three-month project and then we're going to move on to something else. This is a life change. This is something that is a lifelong process and change. Our mission to offer hope and healing is an ongoing, permanent effort. It requires us to continually renew our commitment to the Father and to each other. So we're going to close. It's that time. We are, right? We are. We are an Assemblies of God church. We individually are specifically church members. And we are called to provide hope and healing to our community. And we have a clear mission. To be able to provide, to be able to succeed in this mission, we need to anchor ourselves in God's presence. So I have some homework for you. I want you to make, this week I want you to make a priority to set aside time each day for prayer and reflection. Allow God's promises to be your anchor and let His peace guard your heart and mind. When fear arises, remember that you're not alone. God is with you, guiding and protecting you. And come to prayer meeting on Wednesday. Join us for a time of prayer. Second, we need to act courageously in our faith. We need to consider one area in your life where fear has held you back. It could be reaching out to a neighbor, volunteering at a community project, or standing up for what's right. Whatever it is, I want you to start looking for those opportunities. To take a step of faith this week. Trusting that God's going to give you everything you need to step out in courage and in faith, no matter what obstacles are in your way. And number three, to be a source of transformation in your community. We have to put feet to this. We have to put action. Think about how you can be light in a dark place, whether it's through a community outreach or offering a helping hand or simply being present for someone in need. Let your faith inspire genuine change. Our community needs hope and healing that only Christ can bring, and we are His hands and feet. So let us, I want us to move forward as a church. I want us to move forward with confidence, not of people with fear, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next month, but as a faith filled community ready to make a tangible difference in South City St. Louis because here's why together we are right but what are we we are the church and we will stand up and we will make known our Christ to a lost and dying world we will be the church to offer hope and healing we are the church who is called to seek and to save the lost. Let's pray. So, Father, we praise you. We thank you 
We lift up your name because your name is what is going to save our city. Your name is what is going to restore faith to our community. Your name is what's going to bring unity again to Compton Heights. Your name is what is going to be covering all of South City. It is the name of Jesus that people will stand up. It is the name of Jesus that people will cry out. It is the name of Jesus that will offer hope and healing to their lives. As we close out today's service, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to extend an invitation to anybody who feels the need for God's hope and healing in their life. You'd say, Pastor, you were talking about being in the storm, and I'm being tossed to and fro. Whether, whether you're facing fear, uncertainty, burdens of this world, know that God is here. Know that He is ready to meet you where you are. Maybe you're struggling with fear about your health, feeling overwhelmed by financial worries, or facing the uncertainty of your relationships. Maybe the challenges of life have you feeling lost or burdened. Whatever the fear or struggle, God is here offering His peace, His strength, and His hope. For those that have never made a decision to follow Jesus, today is the perfect time to open your heart to Him. God offers you forgiveness, peace, and a new beginning through His Son, Jesus. If you're ready to take that step, I want to encourage you to come forward and we'll pray with you together as you begin this faith journey. For those who are already walking with Christ, if you need strength to face a specific fear, courage to take the next step, or healing in an area of your life, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, our altar is open for prayer. One of our pastoral folks, our prayer team leaders, are here to pray with you and to pray and believe for God's intervention and guidance in your life. So I want us to take a moment to respond to what God has been speaking to us today, whether it's for salvation, whether it's prayer for a specific need, or simply a desire to draw closer to Him. Now is the time. God is here, and He is ready to bring hope and healing and to transform your life. Please don't hesitate. As the choir sings our closing song, we'll simply be here to receive you if you need any kind of prayer. Amen and amen. Yeah.